Hey, what's going on guys? James here bringing you another YouTube video, and this one is going to be a little intro where I just want to say I apologize because the audio will be of lesser quality than normal. I had a lot of technical difficulties getting ready to review DPW Episode 3, and I just got really frustrated and forgot to make sure that the right mic was checked. So, the audio is of lesser quality, but I still think it sounds pretty good, and I did a lot of editing just like I normally do. So I hope you still enjoy it nonetheless. I'll see you later. Hey, what's going on guys? James here bringing you another YouTube video, and this one is going to be the third edition of my DPW Fire Review. And I can say right away, this might just be my favorite episode of DPW Fire. It was a really solid episode. It was three matches like all the others, but it was also 10 minutes shorter, right around 10 minutes shorter, than the other two episodes. But they had like a nice, compact, jam-packed show in the like 36, 37 minutes that they had for this episode. It was really solid. The action was good. And we had a weird slash unique way to end the show that I'll get into. Yeah, it was a really solid show overall. And uh, might as well just get into it. So yeah. They kicked off with the final match in the first round of the DPW World Championship Eliminator Tournament, which was Kevin Koo versus Diego Hill. Neither guy I was familiar with, but they really impressed me. Uh, this, honestly, is probably my favorite match DPW has done so far. They also confirmed a few of my suspicions from the first couple of episodes, and that is one, Fire is the actual show not just like this one time event or anything like that that they taped. Fire is the actual show. And polls confirmed on Twitter that they are already looking to do more fire tapings down the road. And there's gonna be a lot more DPW in 2022. And which would mean that you already know, I assume is gonna be more like a pay-per-view that they are, they said they're premiering on Patreon. I don't know if it's also gonna to come to YouTube just after Patreon. I don't know how that's going to work. Uh, we'll have to wait and see on that one. Nonetheless, getting back to Kevin Koo versus Diego Hill, like I said before, I was not familiar with either guy, but they really impressed me. And this very well... And this easily could be my favorite match that DPW has done so far. It was really good. Um, that's absolutely a biased answer, though, because they play to what I like in wrestling way more. I still think Andrew Everett versus Rosemary is the best match they've done so far, but that's to be expected when you have two people who are as experienced as Andrew Everett and Rosemary are. But yeah, Kevin Kill and Diego Hill might just be my favorite match. And of course, they also showed us the bracket right before this match got underway. We of course know that Calvin Tankman is going to be facing Andrew Everett in the second round, and we know the winner of this match between Kevin Kill and Diego Hill will be facing Bojack. Like I said, this match, it played to what I like in wrestling a whole lot more. There was some like just awesome technical based mat wrestling shit in this match. It was really cool. Diego Hill really stood out as well. He had some more like strike based, fast paced offense. There was a really good sequence early on where Diego stunned Kevin, not, had him roll to the outside. Then as he got the crowd hyped up, he hopped to the apron. Kevin tried to lay him out. He did a handstand on the apron which was sick as hell. And then he got off quickly, uh, did almost kind of like a 619 type of rotation and kicked him in the face. And there was some other cool stuff. There was a really nice running drop kick while Kevin Koo was placed on a chair on the outside. That was really cool. Again, we saw some really good technical based uh, and submission wrestling from Kevin Koo. After that drop kick, um, on the chair, which Kevin Koo had a really nice sell for, by the way. Like, it was really good. But after the drop kick on the chair, Diego got Kevin back in the ring. Took a little too much time to get in the ring, which allowed Kevin to grab him by the leg and hit a dragon screw leg whip, using the ropes for extra damage. And that's when he Kevin really got into the match, using the technical based stuff, the submissions, and he looked really good uh, using all of those. At one moment, he had like a really nice leg lock that then he completely disrespected Diego by sitting on him. And then he grabbed him, rolled through into a bow and arrow and fully rotated. Later on, Diego got back in the match, got him down, jumped from the top rope, hit a beautiful splash. 
And the only thing that saved Kevin Koo was a foot on the bottom rope, which was very nicely done. Then later on, after a kick out by Kevin Koo, he was able to quickly grab the leg, turn it into an ankle lock. Diego tried to fight, got back on his feet, but his legs were immediately taken out from underneath him, in which he was rolled over and Kevin Koo grabbed a heel hook. And when it looked like Diego was gonna try and reach for the ropes, Kevin Koo just started kicking him in the face with the heel hook locked in, and he was forced to tap out. Again, it was a really good, solid opening match. I really enjoyed it. Again, I think it's probably my favorite match they've done so far. And then after that, they of course had their usual spot for ad reads and sponsors. After that, they went into Rachel Rose versus Kat Spencer, some more women's action. And this one, it was good. Like a lot of the matches that DPW has done so far, there was a very clear babyface and heel dynamic to the match. Rachel being the heel and Kat, I guess, being the babyface? She didn't really do anything to be a baby face, but Rachel was very clearly a heel. Cat looked very good early on, was able to outpower Rachel Rose using that power advantage, get some good stuff in, get a cool unique backbreaker where she dropped Rachel on each individual knee, which was cool, and then just kind of tossed her. But the match was short compared to the honestly kind of longer opening match. It was the downfall of Cat Spencer when Rachel raked the eyes got Kat in the corner. She quickly grabbed the leg, used it, locked it with the ropes for a leg lock, and then rolled through, went off the ropes, and drop kicked the knee, which looked very good. And by the end of the match, it ended with her finisher bend the knee, which a lot of people may know as Adam Cole's last shot. But nonetheless, it was a shorter match, but it was a good women's match. They told the story they needed to tell, and it worked. And then, we had the main event, tag team action. From the curtain, we saw Chris Danger appear, smug look on his face. Chris is so damn good at playing a heel, it is unreal. And it was actually kind of funny, because like at first, Chris comes out, the crowd starts cheering, and then immediately just go, boo! As the reality follows Chris out of the curtain, and the reality, the NDA, they faced this new team to DPW, TSF. Again, not familiar with TSF at all, but the TSF immediately got the babyface welcome as the NDA has legit heat. <laughs> God damn it, I sound like Bully Ray. But no, the NDA, like, the DPW faithful do not like the NDA. <laughs> They've got heat, and TSF immediately, like I said, got the babyface welcome. That was cool. They immediately got jumped before the bell by the reality. The members of TSF were able to spin around, turn it around, and start beating down the NDA, which led, which would end up leading to a quick pinfall and a no count kickout. And the, ma the tag match was fine for what it was. Like both teams looked good. The reality looked really good using tag team fundamentals and isolating a member of TSF. But Hunter Knot of TSF. He got tagged in for the hot tag and he started clotheslining <laughs> the reality like goddamn crazy. It was absolute insanity. But clothesline after a clothesline, taking him down. But eventually, the referee got distracted as Patrick of the reality tried to knock a member of TSF off the top rope in and into the referee. The referee able to get out the way. Referee was then distracted by Patrick. Chris actually came in, low blowed. I want to say Hunter Knott was still in there, and then high-tailed it out of the ring, which led to a sunset flip after the low blow, and Chance Riser was just sitting there, big-ass smile as he had the pin, got the win, and I assume that was purely intentional. I uh, did leave the crowd feeling kind of, you know, cheated, robbed. They didn't get the full experience in the match. I assume that was intentional, and... They were chanting bullshit. They were chanting bullshit. The reality were beating down TSF before out of nowhere you had Luther from AEW and of course, well-known listener of De the Deadlock podcast. Luther ran out, saved his boys, tried to leave when Chris grabbed a mic and he started just running down to Luther. And he had like, honestly, Chris had a great line for Luther. I'll work it into the video. Here, Luther, you ugly piece of trash. I have. Shut the fuck up! 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 I bet you're a real 
Uh, listen when I have this microphone in my godforsaken hand! That line was great. Luther then took the mic and started running down Chris through reality, started hyping up like the deadlock faithful everyone that was in Jacksonville, North Carolina for the event. Really started just hyping everyone up. Essentially started a riot as they uh, titled the video. And just everyone chanting DP dub, DP dub. And yeah, it was crazy. And I think Luther uh, cut a good promo too, but I think their absolute standout here in this whole main event segment was Chris's promo work specifically with the crowd, especially at the end after Luther left and the crowd was still chanting DP dub surrounding the ring. Like there was this one spot where they were chanting shut the fuck up at Chris and Chris's reactions and the way he cut that promo was so fucking good. I have places to be, we have places to be. Uh, security, y'all even got security in here? How about y'all do something? How about y'all do something? How about we get rid of these idiots around the ring? How about we get rid of all these idiots here? You wish. Never gonna happen. Ain't happening. Won't happen. Ain't happening. Keep counting. Don't hold your breath. But yeah, that was really good. Yeah, that was really good. I enjoyed this episode. I think as a whole, episode three is my favorite episode they've done so far. But I still think the best match they've done is Andrew Everett Rosemary, as I said at the start. But again, that's to be expected. They both have so much experience. But... I think my personal favorite match is Kevin Koo and Diego Hill. And overall, yeah, I think this is absolutely my favorite episode of DPW. It was really good. There's some big standout moments. The final round one match of the World Championship Eliminator Tournament was really good. The women's match was short, but it served its purpose and it did well for what they were trying to do. The tag match was again a bit on the shorter side and left you feeling robbed, but that was absolutely intentional. There was no way it wasn't. And I assume it was to really um, have Luther get in there. And I assume Luther just didn't have that much time uh, for the event. And that's kind of why they did that. Again, that's purely speculation on my part. I have no idea. But leaving the crowd feeling robbed at the end of the tag match, that was absolutely intentional. It had to be. Like, you wouldn't book the tag match any other way if it wasn't intentional. But otherwise, yeah, th that was my favorite episode of DPW so far. Fire episode three, definitely my favorite episode to this point. And that's really all I've got to say. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, comment down below, share it on social media, do all the good stuff. Until next time, I will see you later. Bye, guys.